Welcome to the Best of Watch Mojo, the series that refeatures some of our biggest and best videos that you may have missed. Hey, you in my class? I am today. What better way to usher in a new school year than to discuss all the ways it could be improved? And here is the human heart, which you can see is actually located in the center of your chest. Oh, no! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 ways to make school better. Uh, the penis is now, as you will observe, more or less fully erect. There we are. Ah, that's better. For this list, we'll be looking at the different ways in which we think the education system could be improved. Since, you know, we get that eliminating it altogether isn't really an option. Sigh. You know, 90% of the country believes in ghosts. Less than a third in evolution. 35% can correctly identify Homer Simpson and the fictional town in which he resides. Less than 1% knows the name Thurgood Marshall. Number 10, make class length dependent on subject matter. You have part of my attention. You have the minimum amount. The rest of my attention is back at the offices of Facebook, where my colleagues and I are doing things that no one in this room, including and especially your clients, are intellectually or creatively capable of doing. Why is it that classes like math and science, which typically require more time to properly comprehend, last as long as home ec? Look, we all know home ec is a joke, no offense. It's just like everyone takes his class to get an A. It's bullshit, and I'm sorry. And I'm not putting down your profession, but it's just the way I feel. We think that the length of a particular class should be dependent on the subject matter. Too often the bell rings and you're left staring at a chalkboard or projector loaded with dense information. F you, science and then you only have a few moments before you're expected to be in your next class. It's only logical that subjects that require less time to learn should be shorter, whereas subjects that are more difficult should be longer, right? Chlorophyll? More like borophyll, right? Being able to quote Shakespeare is all well and good, but dedicating time to topics that just naturally take longer to learn seems like a beneficial concept for students. Don't worry, Mr. Zuckerberg. Brighter men than you have tried and failed this class. One valid bit, one modified bit, one reference bit, five permission bits. That is correct. Does everybody see how we got there? Number nine, fire bad teachers. In an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone? The Great Depression passed the, anyone? Anyone? A tariff bill? The Hawley Smoot Tariff Act? Maybe they taught English, maybe they taught math, or perhaps it was the woodshop teacher. But he or she sucked at teaching and everyone knew it. You may someday be doctors or lawyers or scientists. Most of you, however, will be pumping gas or cutting sheet metal. And that's why we have shop class. As in any line of work, some people are worse at their job than others. Are you going to teach us anything, or are we just going to sit here? Just do whatever you want. However, unlike many other professions, teachers have the benefit of tenure on their side. Tenured teachers are harder to fire for ineffectiveness in the classroom, allowing them to inflict their poor teaching methods on generations of kids. Getting rid of tenure would allow for school boards to remove teachers who aren't doing their jobs properly thus creating more room for teachers who can effectively run a classroom. Okay, dangerous minds, let's break into groups, discuss chapter one, and if you are lucky, we might sneak in a little planet Earth. Number eight, give students more time outside. Many current education systems rely heavily on children sitting in cramped spaces, with their only natural light source being a row of dirty windows on a nearby wall. Who wouldn't like a little extra time in the sun? In places like Finland and East Asia, students are given breaks periodically throughout the day, specifically to be spent outside the classroom. Well, they have no homework. What if all they want to do is climb a tree? They could climb a tree, yeah. They can climb, climb a tree, then they learn how to climb a tree. But they'll end up, while climbing the tree, probably finding out about different insects, and they can come to school next day telling me about what they found. Our brains tend to get a little groggy when we sit for long stretches. Being in small rooms under fluorescent lights for four to six hours a day only adds to this exhaustion. More outdoor time and a better understanding of mother nature is a must. The hills are alive with the sound of music, with songs they have sung for a thousand years. 
Number seven, get rid of group projects. Now this will be a group project, so I'm gonna place you all into groups of five. Everyone remembers the dreaded group project. The teacher would call out four names and you'd awkwardly shuffle towards one another, eyes cast down, hands jammed into pockets, your mind rapidly formulating a plan for how to best outwit your teammates so they'll do all the work. Oh, not Tweak. We don't want to be in a group with Tweak. There's nothing wrong with Tweak. I bet he'll do a great job in your group. I can't take that kind of pressure. No, sweet Jesus, please. Group projects were an excuse for the lazy to be lazy and for the hardworking to earn their title and be forced to share it with their fellow team members. Carrying the dead weight of someone who doesn't feel like doing his or her share isn't what school is supposed to be about. Do you want to watch TV? Welcome back, Carter, John. <laughs> Are you okay? It's Horshack from the show. It's high time education professionals held a conference to eliminate this superfluous gathering of minds. Because you just can't toss kids together and expect them to form like Voltron. Planet Eris, here we come! Number six, make cafeteria food better and healthier. Have the marshmallow joes. <laughs> I made them extra sloppy for you. <laughs> As we know, maintaining a well balanced diet is an important part of staying healthy. However, when it comes to the food served in many schools around the world, you'd almost be better off skipping lunch entirely. You remember me telling Jimbo Jones that I'd make something of him one day? <gasps> Are you saying you killed Jimbo, processed his carcass, and served him for lunch? <laughs> okay, not really, but the facts are in. And foods that are high in sodium, fat, and sugar are causing kids across the globe to pack on the pounds. Without going completely vegan, it would be a spectacular change of pace to see schools adopt a healthier meal plan for their cafeterias. Well, plans that manage to be nutritious but still taste good, that is. It was definitely the best place to eat in town. It was the school cafeteria. Saying goodbye to Sloppy Joe's and hello to a nice Cobb salad doesn't sound so bad, does it? I know how you kids like them sloppy. <laughs> Lady, you're scaring us. <laughs> Number five, eliminate bullying. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. As long as there's been school, there have been bullies. While they come in all shapes and sizes, the common thread is their unrelenting desire to see others suffer. Throughout the years, many students have feigned illness to avoid an encounter with the school aggressor. Why does it have to be this way? A bully-free school environment would make all the difference. No more hiding in the bathroom at lunchtime or dreading getting picked last in gym class. Eliminating bullying is easier said than done. However, it holds true that anything worth doing shouldn't be a walk in the park. O'Doyle rules. O'Doyle, I got a feeling your whole family's going down. But for now, I got to study. Motivational speakers and anti-bullying classes are simple ways schools could try to end the plague of bullying. You don't want to take care of the problem. Yes, and if you did want to take, take care, care of it, problem. it would be took care of. Number four, make school hours shorter. Uh, Good work, people. We will continue with our lecture on the man when we return. Children today are learning 24-7. Access to computers allows kids to discover new information at a rate that was previously unheard of. How about global thermonuclear war? So why are we sticking them in cramped, poorly lit buildings five days a week in the name of education? A study on elementary school students conducted by Georgia State University and Montana State University found that shortening the school week to four days could improve students' academic performance. It is Saturday and we're at the beach. And I got enough junk food to choke a goat. <laughs> what more could you want? Not only do shorter school weeks lead to increased productivity among both students and teachers, they also serve as an effective way to help save costs. Those extra funds could be put towards different student services. Hey, you in the cape. Yep, first, let's go. Hey, if the academics say it's cool, who are we to disagree? Finland students have the shortest school days and the shortest school years in the entire Western world. They do better by going to school less. Yay! Number three. Give schools more funding. The annual bake sale provides 90% of the school's funding. It's no secret that children are the future. Yet when you walk the halls of public schools around the world, it appears as if governments don't really believe it. Where's our desk? 
Right, deaths. Well, a lot of cuts had to be made since the school's funding is short for lawsuit. Crumbling infrastructures, outdated books, broken chairs, and everyone's favorite tube TV atop a tray on wheels. These are just some of the problems facing both students and teachers today. Bottom line, schools need better funding. Children today grow up with an iPad in one hand and an Xbox controller in the other. Yet when they come to school, they're faced with archaic textbooks, dusty chalkboards and desks from the 80s. Like they say, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Well, I hope you do. Otherwise, it's lobby potatoes from here on out. Yeah! Number two, abolish standardized testing. Do you even know what SAT stands for? Suck ass test. Scholastic aptitude test. The hardest tests are the ones where you don't know what's coming. That's why standardized testing isn't an accurate representation of a student's academic worth. What are you people, on dope? Federal and state testing lumps everyone into a single category, when in reality, different people learn at different rates. It's a test, Sammy. We'll test this, you fucking quack. Teachers should be the ones who ultimately decide what's on a test, because they're the ones disseminating knowledge to their students on a daily basis. Moving away from standardized testing and putting the task in the hands of teachers would benefit students greatly, allowing them to test their knowledge of a particular subject in a way they're familiar with. Plus, nobody likes filling in all those tiny circles. A lot of people think these questions are difficult. Not me. No? No. These questions all have answers. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Mr. Spicoli has been kind enough to bring us a snack. And be my guest. Help yourselves. Did you study for this test? Yeah, why? Then not such a miracle, really. Luke. Can I go to the bathroom? No, you went 20 minutes ago. Uh, I have a, um, a bladder infection. The palm. Jesus H. Christ, we're still Report here. Showing impact. No, sir, no impact. We're alive and well. <laughs> All right. Number one. No more homework. If you can just turn to page 47 of uh, Land of Truth and Liberty. Oh, I left that book in my locker, Mr. Ad. In that case, uh, I'm glad I remembered to bring an extra copy, uh, just for you. The last thing any kid wants to do when they get home from school is homework. A Stanford University study found that in countries like Japan and Denmark, less homework was assigned, and students ended up performing better than students in other countries where more homework is given. After school time should be devoted to relaxing with friends and family, not burning the midnight oil trying to complete an assignment. Teachers should suggest interesting museums to visit or good books to read, encouraging students to learn in a more hands-on manner. Schools should strive to ensure that all subjects require an equal amount of homework. Because nighttime and weekends are for having fun, not cramming. Oh, so much homework. Childhood slipping away. <laughs> Bart, put down those books and go play this instant. If you say so. Do you agree with our list? You are a bitch! Why? Because I'm telling the truth? That makes me a bitch? What are your ideas for making school better? Who lives in the east neath the willow tree? Sexual harassment, panda. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.